welcome to Tales from the Flip Side, bringing you a special modern uh, playbook roundtable. So today we'll be discussing uh, CBCS and CGC. So uh, we also have a special guest I want to welcome, uh, Dennis Barger. How's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. Hey, so, hey. pleasure. Yep. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I have a few slides just to go over, so you know, so we can get the discussion rolling. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I wanted to mention is that you know, Beckett is currently owned by CBCS, and then recently, Blackstone has purchased the CGC. So I, you know, I thought that was a uh, you know kind of interesting that you know, you know, we have two different big major companies buying you know, something that affects us, you know, collectibles and grading comics. Um, so I just, before we started our discussion, you know, I just kind of wanted to go through like different pricing tiers. Uh, I know a lot of us use CGC, uh, some use CBCS. So let's go ahead and just go over the pricing tiers of CBCS first. Um, so currently if you're a member, it's $16 a book if you're uh, for modern, for non-members it's 18. Expanded, which is pre-1975, is 27 for members, $30, um, up to a value of $250. Uh, for consumer, is any year, is $30. For members, non-members, $34, uh, values up to 400 books, $400. Uh, there's also a two-day modern tier, uh, which is 36 for members, $40 for non-members. It takes about two business days. And it's valued up to $2,000. Uh, Quickstream is uh, any year for $52 a book. non members is $58. Um, and then there's a rapid tier grading, which is up to the value of uh, $4,000. And it's uh, $90 per book for non members and $81 for members. Uh, some additional service they have, they have a one-day turnaround, which is 2.6 of the market value. Uh, there's no value limit, same day service. Original art, you can grade it uh, to for sixteen dollars a book for members, eighteen for non-members, and then a CBCS reholder is ten dollars. And um, all the all the turnaround times are posted on their website. Uh, I believe they update in their form page, uh, similar to what CGC does. So for the pricing of CGC. Or, uh, and then continuing on with uh, CBCS, some additional services you can add. You can add um, FastPass, which is uh, $9 per members and $10 for non-members. Uh, it cuts the turnaround time in half. Uh, you can also add a witness signature, which is $5 a book, CBCS authorized witness. Uh, uh, Unwitness, which is a verified service that a lot of people are interested in, is $25 per book, $15 for each additional signature. Uh, there's an image add-on uh, where it's a front picture of the encapsulation. Uh, it's $5 a book for members, $6 for non-members. Free image for one-day tiers. And then you can do a slideshow add-on, which is $300 per book. And for CGC, this is the uh, pulled off the website uh, today. And the modern tier grading is a value up to $400. It's $22 uh, per item, uh, $15 for fast track. Uh, this is their current turnaround times. Uh, economy is pre-1975 up to $400. It's $300 or $33 per book. And it's a... Fifteen additional dollars for for fast track. Uh, standard is up to a thousand dollars, and it's a uh, seventy five dollars per item, and it's eighty five eighty five days turnaround time. Express up to three thousand is one hundred twenty dollars per item. Uh, they have a walkthrough service, which is three percent of the market value, and then uh, they have a reholder, which is up to a thousand dollars per item, and it's twenty dollars, and it takes about eighty days. Uh, uh, there's a yeah, so there's a reholder for also for a higher value, which is about fifty dollars, and yep, you can also uh, pre-screen still for eight dollars per item, uh, and then they have the digital imaging for five dollars and custom labels for additional five dollars. 
They All should right. make the custom labels uh, free for as long as you have to wait for for your books, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, every time I hear people talking about CGC, I just feel like Joe Pesci in Casino. And when he's talking to that banker, you're putting my money to sleep. You're putting my money to sleep. You know, and it, it, it really is sad. And that doesn't. And that's another thing we were just talking uh, in the pre-show. C- CBCS is checking my books in within two days of that package arriving, and I've heard horror stories where boxes are sitting at CGC for a month before they even get opened up and checked in. Yeah, the growing pains there. I I, I can't see them getting any 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 better because, listen, Blackstone they they didn't buy CGC for the love of the hobby, right? Beckett. Right. Right, right. Beckett got into uh, got into it with CBCS because uh, similar lines of business. Blackstone's in there for one reason, and one reason only. How much more business can we cram through here, right? And uh, I think the price increases happened at, in, ahead of that deal announcement on purpose. Yeah. Um, so um, you know that was in the works, in my opinion, long before. And I don't think things are going to get better. And and if they do, um, you got to wonder what the quality control is going to be like, right? I mean, if they're going to add 10,000 more people working there. Um, you know, what, what does that mean for the quality of the grading of your books? It's, it, it's some big, big questions there, but, but Blackstone is not in there for the love of the, of the hobby by any means that they're, they're in there to see how much, uh, how much more business can we push through this thing? And then how can we flip it to somebody else? I mean, that that's really their end goal. So uh, it's necessarily going to change. Um, you know, for me, when it comes to grading and, you know, this is probably a little too, uh, um, a little too altruistic, but you know, a grade is a grade for me, right? I mean, it's a commodity at the end of the day, right? If it's a 9.8 and we're all grading honestly, right? Um, and 9.8 is not 9.8. For me, it doesn't really matter who, who it's coming from. So, I mean, I, I've been a buyer of CBCS for a long time. Now, now granted, I've never subbed anything to them, um, but, but I do trust their grading, unlike maybe some of the other third and fourth tier providers out there. Um, when it comes down to a grade and, and this idea that, you know, their books sell for such a discount to CGC has never made a lot of sense to me. And, well, I, and that's what I wanted to, that's why I came on here. And I came on here to ask you guys, cause I, you're a cross section. I love your guys' shows. Um, there's only three questions that I ever ask anybody when it comes to the debate. Do you agree that a CBCS nine, eight is a high quality book? And I think we all, everybody said, yes, absolutely. It is a 9.8. There, it's probably not a 9.6 if it got a C, CBCS 9.8. Secondly, does everybody agree that CBCS is a tougher grader than CGC? Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I don't think anybody I, disagrees with that fact. I wouldn't say tougher grader. I would say more consistent. I would say more accurate is what I would say. But yeah, exactly. Um, and then lastly, uh, uh, I, I lost my third point. Um, <laughs> but, but lastly, is there any reason why it should go for a penny less than a CGC 9.8? No, I, I think the quality the of the slab. Yeah, the, the, the old school qualities of the slabs, at least back in the day. Like, okay, so we kind of, we kind of, at least in, at least in my history, like what was it, like 2010, 2011, CBC has kind of opened the doors. Remember when you could like take your fingernails and like pop, the, like open the slide? Yeah. I mean, it was like, yeah. come on, dude. But like, I remember when you could do this and crack a CGC case. Well, you know? I mean, true. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, now, you know, I, I brought a book that just came back this week mm-hmm. um, from CGC. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, you can see the little hologram now over here. Oh, God, I can't. I, there we go. Is that a restored? Oh, right. Is that restored? What is that? No, purple no, label? Blue, blue label. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but here's the thing. I've been, I had probably back with my CGC days, I probably had three or four of these graded. I rarely could ever get a 9.8 out of them on this book. And I got, uh, I pre screened five copies of this and got one 9.8 from CBCS, hmm. all from the same batch collection of a, of a hoarder. And now I'll tell you what. I, let's let's just do this real quick here. Oh, that's it's, nice. It's, clearly, yeah. my cam, camera's shit, but you can read that top label now way better wow. than you ever yeah. read anything. So this yeah. is the new CBCS, man. These labels pop. They are every bit, if not better, than a CGC label now. 
Yeah, well, that I, does look sharp. I like on the new cases too that it, you know they have the rounded edges now, and then they don't have like the little clips that they used to have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it you know I don't know exactly how they steal it now, yeah, but this, they, this yeah. is an old CGC case right here. You can see there's squared versus round. You can see kind of the non right there. It was it was a little bit lighter on the label, and the blue didn't pop as much. Hmm. But I, I think the evolution of the CBCS case has really just gets bigger better and better every time they get challenged. Would you would you agree though that CBCS is more consistent because they have to deal with less books being shipped to them versus CGC? I don't think so cuz even there was a point in time where CBCS was backed up to like 4 months. Okay. And 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 I think at the exact same time CGC was backed up 6 months yeah. uh, if I remember correctly. I think so too. Yeah. So, you know, let's keep it in perspective here. Um, and at one point, I think they had the exact same number of graders. I would say, like, if things are going to continue on, I mean, it, it shouldn't hurt the value on a modern book. Like, if you send a Stray Dogs number one to CBCS, yeah. it should carry the same value as a, a CGC. Right. Now... I may consider, like, if I have a giant size X Men, like you do in that 8.0, yeah. I, I would consider uh, uh, sending it to CGC. And that's just my opinion because no. of if, if I wanted to sell it, if I wanted right. to sell it right well, away. There, there, okay. So there's, there, there's two different sides of that story. So there's it's all about your flow through rate right i mean right. if you're like if you're like dennis who like submits a lot of cbcs books and just turns and burns them right i mean he, he theoretically and don't let me speak for you dennis it's like you know if you're if you're just turning and burning books you don't care about the the decrease in value theoretically because you're just gonna you're just gonna get money faster but right. if you're yeah. if you're just selling books once in a great while you're gonna go to cgc because you're gonna command the premium the perfect example is that uh, remember that one week where the Pacelli second print for Ultimate Fallout Four went mm -hmm. from being that schlub of a one hundred dollar book that nobody wanted to touch Correct. to being five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and then it was seven hundred and fifty. I can only imagine how many because I I probably sold six or seven nine eights during that time, all between the four hundred and six hundred. $700 range uh, while everybody else who was scrambling to grab their copies and send them to CGC was still waiting for CGC to unpack them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, That's a great point. I mean, time is money, baby. I, I do like those new uh, CBCS labels. I, I mean, um, that, uh, let me see that again. Oh, look at that. Right, yeah. Son of a gun. Yeah, Dino saw the stack of these in person. I did. I did. How many yeah. do you have? Just all, all, all graded like that? No, no, no. I had just stacks of these things laying around. Man, I, I like the way that label looks, man. That is sharp. You know, I mean, I'll tell you what. When I pull books, when we sell one and I got a box full of books, I used to never look at the top label. I used to flip through the whole box to find where the book was. Now I literally I can spot the book a mile away from the top label. Yeah, wow. the old labels were garbage. Like you barely could see yeah. anything. They were in the middle. Yeah, yeah they were kind of folded sticker. up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, there used to be a sticker up on top, and the mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Yeah, that white sticker. And yeah. the old school scammers on CTC used to peel that sticker up and re-glue it to new things and put a fake one <laughs> right here. Well, the the funny thing was that. CGC used to also do the stickers also yeah. before they, um, you know, before they changed their case and then they had to change their case again, yeah. um, you know, but I mean, that's a whole nother story. I mean, I'm not trying to bring that up, but you know, anyways, like, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, both companies are kind of like pushing well, I mean, to improve their, pr pr pushing to well, improve their product. Well, right? it's always going to be, I mean, it, it's capitalism, right, Ben? So there's always a one, a one B, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, right? There's always going to be one that's, I will say for a fact, right? Commands a premium, one's a discounter, right? I mean, look at look at store brands, right? You can buy premium good or you can buy the off brand like Target Myers, whatever, you know. 
That's yeah, what it's I, about. I would say though, eventually, right? There becomes like it'll be like Coke and Pepsi and everybody yeah. else, right? I mean, yeah. in a lot of people's eyes, Pepsi is still number two to Coke, right? Mm -hmm. But they're both they're they're both sort of top shelf yeah. companies, right? So I, I think you know, I, I think CBCS and, and yeah. PGX is RC Cola. <laughs> it's a Shasta, man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't think PGX, given, given what they, the shit they pulled back in the day, no matter how they try to rehabilitate themselves, yeah. they can never really get themselves back into the game. Man, I would, I would have changed my fucking name, dude. Yeah, for PGX. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. just call it X. Well, well, <laughs> well, um, well is, P, PGX is for people who just use. You just want to throw it in quick in a slab, and you don't even care what the grade is. I mean, if I had, I mean, I probably wouldn't do it because it's such a big book. But like, say you had a big boy book that was five thousand dollars, and you didn't want to spend the percentage and all that stuff. You just throw it in PGX for you know hundred bucks or whatever is charged, and you get it back in two weeks, and you don't even care. Like, I had a wonder woman. Of course, PGX. I'd send it to uh, who's the guy down in e EGS? Tony. Tony. At least he's honest. Like, I mean. Yeah. He'll he'll grade it legit. I, I'd if, if that's the case, I'd send it to him before PGX reputation is so fucking bad. Yeah, uh, they may know. switch out your book, man. I had Wonder Woman ninety eight, yeah. dude. I had a Wonder Woman ninety eight that I just wanted to get in a in a slab just so it wouldn't get fucked up. And I, I mean, I got like a two and a half, and then I go into with the uh, uh, CGC. I think I got like a two o or a one eight, or it was like a three and a half, and then I came back with like a two two o or something. <laughs> but there, whatever. There was a period time between when I left CGC for screwing me over and before CBCS was created. And during that time, I used to suggest to indie artists, uh, you know, if you really want to, you know, you created this comic book, you love your own comic, uh, you should go get it graded, have a copy of it on your wall graded to show, you know, customers how, how much you think of it. And that was the only time I ever suggested PGX services was, you know, grade your little indie comic book that you printed on, you know, Wham! Publishing or whatever, Kaboom Publishing. Just get it graded to show people how much you respect it, and maybe they will reciprocate that, you know. And, and there is a reason for PGX, clearly, cheapskates. Yeah, I mean, I, I've never bought one. I've never had one. I, I, it's not for me. But, yeah, I mean, there's a place for everybody. But yeah. I think the Dino's original point, right? How there's sort of a one A one B, um, they're both sort of top top level, and I, I think right now CBCS um, from a lot of people is still perceived as a clear number two, right? Not necessarily neck and neck, but but I mean, I think, you know, the thing is, is I don't think they know the story though, uh, Mr. Longshort. You cannot have this discussion without mentioning the name Steve Borok. Uh, yeah, no, I, Dennis, I, I'm I'm 100 with you, and I and I, I want to be clear, right like in the comic book industry, he's a good friend of mine. I'll I'll say that out front. Um, but he started CGC. You people know, don't, people not, do not know that. A lot of people don't know that. They don't know he's the guy who came up with, hey, let's use these three letters CGC, and let's read comics this way, and let's put them in these plastic things, and he revolutionized the industry. And at a certain point, he got as much fulfillment out of putting books in plastic as he could, and he moves over to Heritage Auction so he can start playing with all the bigger books and the bigger artwork. And guess who they used? CGC. And they used to send all their books to CGC. And he's never told me, and I've never heard him say it. He's too classy of a guy to ever, you know, uh, drink the tea. But something happened, and he said, look, we can't keep doing this, you know? Um, and I had heard a lot of shady stories about CGC and some of the people that work for them and some of the people that were periphery to them. I'm not going to get into, you know, salacious allegations, but something happened for Steve Borok to say, I can't trust CGC anymore. I need to leave my nice cushy job here at Heritage, get to play with original art by, you know, Jack Kirby and, you know, Action Comics number ones for a million dollars. And I need to go over here and start an entire new service to do things the way I originally started the service to do things. And, I mean, that should speak volumes to this industry. But nobody talks about this. Yeah, no, I think people get lulled into complacency, right, about what they trust and what they buy. I, I will say this, Dennis, right? You, you've always been uh, a proponent uh, of uh, CBCS. 
But, you know, people who were diehard CGC guys are starting to change their mind a little bit. And I'll say one, like, who, who admitted they would never is uh, is Mighty Mel V, right? He's he's and talking Mike. about... Right? He's talking about um, subbing to CBCS, right? Where he yeah. was always a CGC guy through and through. Uh, and he's not the only one. But I think when you start to see sort of respected players like that um, begin to sort of pivot a little bit, there's a pivot coming in the industry. And I'm not saying that CBCS is necessarily going to take over CGC. That is not what I'm saying. But I think it is going to elevate it to that sort of 1B status that that Dino And I think there's a lot of cover for CGC. I I honestly do. And I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody. But I know, like, I I went to a store in Ohio uh, a couple months ago. And I said, oh, wow, let me see that 9.6 you got up there. I don't care. You know, for me, I'm, if I'm buying books, I don't care if it's CGC or CBCS. Um, and I said, oh, let me see that. And they're, and they're looking, they hand it to me, and they're looking at me, looking at the book. And I'm like, how did this get a 9.6? And it's a CGC. And, I mean, it's got scuffs on the back. I'm looking at two visible spine breaks on this. And I'm like, how the hell did this book – Get a 9.6 from CGC. I wouldn't give this a 9.2. And it was a book they had graded in that last month. I mean, it was a book that just got Supernova. It was a La Roca Star Wars. Uh, uh, Afra. You know, and I'm like, yeah, dude, I wouldn't touch this book to save my life at, with a 9.6 on it. Well, you know, one thing I do like about CBCS, you know, on the back, you can see that they have a QR code. And yeah. so, like, if you... I actually, put, I actually put my phone over here so I could show people. Do you want me to yeah. do it? Yeah, I mean, either or. Like, yeah, if you want to do it, here, let me... Okay, uh, so, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll let you get there. Yeah. There we go. Do you see that little bar up there at the top? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to click on that. All right, and it's going to tell us... It brings it up, and it says, uh, so this is... Uh, Marvel Milestone Edition, Amazing Fantasy 15, no number, uh, gives you the date, March 92 variant. Uh, it, it was supposed to be a newsstand because it is a newsstand. So this is one of the few times CGC is, uh, CBC has screwed something up. Uh, and then it'll give you notes if you have the greater notes for free. You don't have to pay extra for the notes. It's for free. Every CBCS book has this QR code. And anytime you're at a convention, you can literally pull your phone out scan the book and it will tell you everything that's wrong with it as long as you have wi-fi yeah or or get some sort of cell signal yeah yeah exactly yeah and to me that's that's enormous and it's for free every book well and, my, you know, i mean my, my biggest concern about cbcs is you remember dennis the whole inner well problem with cgc and it was like the uh what was it the uh newton rings and all that crap they're still there like, Dude, well, I know, I know. Show every week. But but CBCS had multiple chances and and Steve or whoever Beckett, whoever's doing it, to like kind of put their put their foot down on CGC. What well, and here's something you don't know, Dino, and maybe you do know it. I, I, I'm not pandering yeah, to you. Yeah. CGC paid Reed Pop an unknown amount of money to make sure CBCS was allowed nowhere near the building for two years mm-hmm. yep. at any read pop show. Now yep. it's a little difficult to gain any traction in our industry. If you are not there to witness and grade books mm-hmm. and it's really shadier that CGC, the superior company mm-hmm. would pay money to keep the only competitor they have out of the room. And I'll tell you this, do you know when CBCS was allowed back in the room? It wasn't it like last year or something like that? February 28, 2020, the last convention of the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm not saying that- CGC created COVID. Yeah. But- <laughs> that would be a bombshell. Well. I, I will say this, like, I remember going to Emerald City Comic Con in 2018, and that's about the time, like, you know, more people were hearing about CBCS and all and their services and everything, and, you know, that's a read pop show, and, you know, obviously, like, I'm going to get books graded, you know, I need a witness signature, all that, and by the time I was out of the convention, I looked at Facebook, and I was like, what? 
CBCS is here, I would have totally gone to them because, you know, their service is a little bit cheaper and it's like, you know, these are personal books I'm going to keep anyways. Yeah. Why would I pay the extra fees like for books I'm going to keep? I mean, that's just my personal opinion. You know, both like it depends on what I'm doing with the book for. If it's for my Whoa. personal collection, you know. I, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, I guess let's, let's talk about this whole repop thing. So Ben, I want to, I want to hear your side of this too. So if I'm a competitor, you're, you know, you're, the, you're, you're, my, you're in business with me, right? And we're competitors at CGC and we get banned from read pop shows. Right. So I, I, I'm, and Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong. That means they can't set up inside the building. Right. Right. They actually set up in a bar yeah. about two miles up the road. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's like, you know, when you just, when you just say, if you're CG, CBCS, when you just offer onsite grading, then it'd be yeah. like, you, just like CBCS onsite grading and be like, boom. And like, oh, take no, that that, that show they did. They did okay. that for two years at CG, uh, C2E2. But just at C2E2, not any other show. Well, no, because I mean, they got to move their entire operation. So they were out of, te well, first of all, at that time they were out of Florida and then mm -hmm. they moved from Florida because to Texas because of the hurricanes. Yeah. And then during that transition period, I mean, they moved. The, and then of course, Beckett buying them, moved them from Florida to Texas with Beckett. Yeah. And I had talked to Steve and they were like, look, it was it was everything we could do to move all of our stuff from point Texas A to point B to yeah. here. And it was only because they were moving and everything was mobile that they could even kind of slide that in is what I had heard. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I mean, it, but I'll tell you what. There were lines of people. We were all everybody who loved CBCS was like, oh, you're doing on site. Great. Let's go over there. Do it. Um, you well, know, I and the thing is, is I'm one of the more vocal CBCS people. There's a lot of people who use CBCS that don't ever mention it because they don't want to be looked down upon by people. Uh, oh, you're using CBCS. Oh, okay. Well, I, I do. I do want to say I remember when CGC was having the inner well problem. This is like right when I was getting into grading. Like, you know, I did my research. I wanted to see like what both companies were doing. You know, I'm new into the this hobby. Like. Let me see what this is about. And one thing I do remember is that they had a promo that if you cross over your CGC books that had problems with either the um, Newton rings or the inner well problem, they were they would do the service for fifty percent off for yeah. I think like six months to a year or something mm -hmm. like that for a long time. Yeah. So I mean, you know, they did offer you know that service for people to cross over, and then you know CGC did the same thing. I just, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm like the Joker. I snap a pool cue in half and I throw it down to three guys and say, fight it out fairly, guys. <laughs> and and anytime I see one guy going, uh, yeah, I will, how much can I pay you to keep anybody who is my competitor? You know, and we, you know, and, and on this show, on all these shows, we talk about integrity of comics. I'm sorry, that's not integrity. But, yeah, but, but, I mean, but that's, that's cutthroat business. They're doing yeah. it because. But they're clearly worried. Yeah. They're clearly clearly worried about losing market share. Yeah. Right. If, if 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 and I think that is probably a testament to CBCS is that if, if they were really shitty, they wouldn't have to do that. Right. The quality right. of what they were doing would speak for itself. So, um, you know, that's understandable. That's that that's the way the world goes. Um, you you, you can't do that forever, but um, but that's probably a testament to uh to CBCS. You know, at the end of the day, for me, right. The real value in this, right, is what's inside the plastic, right? It's the book, right? The grading itself, if they're grading honestly, right, I, I struggle with why we put a premium on who graded it, right? If, if, if the book is a 9.8 mm -hmm. by the standards that this hobby um, created, yeah. grades, then the, the value of the book in there, it shouldn't matter who did it if they're doing it honestly, which is why PGX isn't part of this conversation. Um <sighs> And that's what I really struggle with at the end of the day. I, I think well, I, I showed this book up to say, look, you know, and I, I brag a lot. I humble brag a lot. Of, you know, I'm one of the most humble people I know. Um, this book held the record for the highest price ever paid for it until it got beat by one hundred dollars a month later by the CGC version. Right. So, so, so what you're saying is that whoever bought it paid a premium price for the CBCS. Exactly. And I, I you know, I held the record on that uh, Action Comics 9 black and white, too, because the spec died after I sold it for some insane amount of money. Uh, I think it was $2,000. Uh, 
but I, I still hold out that that spec's going to come back again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I just think once influencers in, in 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 the hobby, people like around this this table here, can can sort of admit that CBCS is no different than, than CGC. You're going to start to see those prices normalize. Now, there's always going to be some of the old school people who are going to say, "I only do CGC. That's all I want." Right. So be it. But I think what you're going to find over time is as more people, um, you know, recognize that there, there really isn't a difference, that there, that, that gap, certainly yeah. in moderns, is going Whoa. to close, right? I mean, there should be nothing. There, there should be no gap. And I don't think either should get a premium or a discount because if it's a 9.8, that's a fair price for a 9.8. And if we trust both companies are doing what they're supposed to be doing, right, that, that, that that's yeah. where the price is. Well, I think, I think the other thing, thing, too, is the interesting thing, too, is the advent of the CGC boards, right? I mean... Most old school guys or most CGC diehards, right? Or any, all of us probably, right? On the CGC boards at some point in our lives for either month, week, years, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to pull away from that, especially when you have an ingrained community. I mean, like, and then, and then CBCS kind of started their own forum thing, but it's like, you know, it, those guys are just locked in there forever. I mean, they, they know, hey, I can sell books oh. on the forums. I can do all that stuff. Can I, can I say something? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I love the new look of uh, the CBCS lab, and I love the QR code. But, you know, in my opinion, if they really wanted to move the needle, I mean, there needs to be more of differentiation between the two companies. The slabs, they look... Too similar. Too similar, right? So when Beckett bought them, I mean, I and I heard that story. I thought, like, hold up a Beckett card. Do you have a Beckett card graded? Yeah. Uh, a Beckett one? Yeah. Beckett. You see oh, the Beckett one. If they were to slab a comic book in a, a clear acrylic like that and just take on the name Beckett, I mean, what do you it. think that would have done? for them well, because and, CB, no, CBCS no, 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 because you're talking about differentiation yeah, right and it's a diehard competition I would I would take that Beckett name and I would put it to to a comic book and that way you don't sound like CGC you got right. CBCS CGC and they had every opportunity to do something like that yeah. I mean they have magazines of Sports Illustrated slabbed in a Beckett label just like that, and they're gorgeous. And I always told I, I told a couple of buddies of mine, uh, I think they're uncirculated Sports Illustrated. I think they have a Kobe one on eBay right now for like a grand. Uh, if they were to slab a comic book in something like that, then then you're talking then 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 that's got my attention. Well, along, along with a QR code. That's and what they need to level upgrade. up. And, and a subgrade. Let's, let's just go one crazier and go subgrades. Absolutely. They're really throw it at, at CGC and say, look, uh, this comic centering is a 10. Staples are a 10. You know, if you get rusty staples. Hell yeah. So See, you can have so a five, that, five that, rusty staple. That's a differentiation I'd be willing to pay for. Yeah. And right? I think I, if you I, want me to go over to the next level, why would I go over to something that kind of looks like CGC and, and it's got a QR code where I can get, uh, I mean, but I don't need Grader's Notes if I got a, a, a 9.8, you know? Although we were talking about it beforehand, I would like to see Grader's Notes because we're supposed to start at a 10 and Absol a 9.8 is yeah. supposed to have two defects to get us to 9.8. Right. Yeah, I I mean, well, I think there's an agenda uh, in grading that way. Because uh, you would have more nine eights, you flood the market, and, and and then your nine eights wouldn't be worth what nine eights are going for right now. Yeah. So there's an agenda to make that a premium grade, and and make that the sought after grade. Well, yeah. we haven't we haven't talked about the the little um, um, other hack that we can talk about is um, is uh, no not that. Um, <laughs> so if you do a um, uh, a label like a character label. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's re and it's restored. Poof. You get a you get a blue label somehow. Yeah. Poof. Oh <laughs> no! It, it says it's on the back, right? Well, yeah. I mean, 
I yeah. mean, but if, if you're not a comic book guy like us in this room, and you're just a guy who's like, hey, well, why is this giant size X-Men going for, you know, $300, and it's supposed to be a $3,000 book, right? I mean. Can you see yeah. that? So, um, oh. I like that. I like that they still put this. Uh, now that they've gone to verified signature program mm-hmm. as Mello, it's still the very first thing on here says verified signature. So well, yeah, you know, and then and yeah, if you see a witness signature too, it'll say witness, and then it has the date. Right. Yeah. So you know, I mean, and and it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one doesn't because I, I, yeah, you're right, you're right, because it says witness signature and the date and the convention sometimes. Yep. Correct. Yeah, but look at this banger. How many people got that signed? And on top of that, signed by Stan Lee right there. Banger indeed. Banger indeed. Wow. I didn't know. I didn't know this was going to be a show and tell. I got to bust out some books right now, no, brother. I had a sucker punch you, Rag. <laughs> I have everything ready. Show them what's up, Ben. All right, <laughs> represent. So, I mean, I don't. I don't have anything super impressive or anything like that. But you know, I did bring like two Ooh. Ooh. two books that are like you know the same grade, the exact same book. You know, so you know. Here we go, Aaron. Like <laughs> you know. Just yeah, so, like, people could see his opinion because CGC still uses the little white box with the the, yep. the number. I kind of like CBCS, I like what Steve Borok said, which is, uh, we're grading the book, not the label. But right, the market says something completely else because they want to pay because, the because they want they want differentiation, yeah, right. So, if you if you want my business, I mean, like, you uh, you got to level up. And that's not, I don't know what the cost of, uh, to change, uh, a label. Yeah. I mean, I can see where CBCS looks a lot better. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the one thing I will say about, you know, you know, if I threw up both these books, like on my eBay account at a dollar auction, you know, just starting off like same day, like all that, like, you know, is there going to be a difference? Yes, there is. You know, but if I, you know, if I do this at a dollar auction and then I set this at like what the current fair market value is as a buy now, it'll end the same, right? I mean, this may stay on the market for a few more days until there's less of these on the market. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm getting the same amount of money, right? I, I, don't pretend, I don't pretend that my CBCS books don't sell slower than the equivalent CGC, but that's not because of, you know, we all went through it quality we all think it's accurate we all think it's you know it's what it is but the industry is very perceived to love cgc rather than and i think it's because and let me get off on a wayside tangent here cgc was started by two guys was helped out by two guys who wanted to get into a pissing match over who had the better copy of action comics number one you know, and then they set them off and, oh, I got an 8.0 and I got an 8.5. Oh, mine's better than yours. You know, suck it. Um, and that's where we're still at in this industry, except for now we have 20, well, 15 years of those guys with CGC books. And the CBCS guys are, you know, except for me being the flamboyant CBCS guy, um, there's nobody over at CBCS to say suck it. Well, so one one thing CGC does. So I I had a nine six uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel universe from CBCS. I sent it over for a crossover because I wanted the unique Deadpool label, and I got a nine eight. And I didn't ask for it to be, but that's what they do. They they grade it, but more often than not, they grade up, right? Right. Well, so so right. word gets out. Hey, if you got a nine six. And you cross over, well, that's, 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 uh, that's a, a good, 70% chance you're going to get a 9 8. Well, that's a good financial thing we always talk about on yeah. all the shows. It's like when you cross over CBCS 9 6s and 9 8s, you can get 9 6 for cheap and then you can get a 9 8 and you're right. damn near doubled your My money. The question is legitimately, yes, you can make money that way. But mm-hmm. if we're being, if we're being a, a people of integrity here, mm-hmm. we can't, we shouldn't be not calling that out. How bullshit is it? That an accurately graded nine six over at CBCS is getting turned into a nine eight over at CGC, and somehow a nine eight at CGC is perceived to be more. 
But Whoa. but you know, if you think about it, if you look at the old Overstreet guy, uh, the nine six and nine eights are both near men. They're you virtually know? the same. Overstreet track. never went higher than nine two. Back right, then. right. So in theory, it's kind of the same grade, man. You know, so I, I and that's why it, it surprises me that nine six and nine eight is is it's like it doubles. Like if yeah. you have a nine six, uh, that's I mean, a, right now it's tripled in a lot of cases. Yeah, right? yeah, triple in a lot of cases. Yeah. You're right. On new I mean, fans, anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you find you know without looking too hard, like instances where it's like within the same range. You know, like you know Dennis's book is an example. Uh, I think I had on Dealer Drunk Side, like two GI Joe books that literally sold a difference of a dollar. So, Aaron, we, we talked about this beforehand. Pull up the census on this book. All right. On the CGC or CBCS? Oh, both. Both. Okay. All right. It, it's because it's because you had two two eye emojis and three flame eye emojis on your eBay. That's what. Well, I mean, <laughs> right. it's, all about, it, it's all about how many flame emojis you put on That's it. Right. That's right. Or it could be too. What uh, what kind of books do you have on your your site, right? So if you got some badass books and you got a mixture of CGC, CBCS, I I I I think you could sell your CBCS book at a premium. You get a hundred percent seller rating. Uh, I think the the customer will feel pretty good about paying this the same amount. But you got somebody that's ninety nine percent. They got PGXs and they got raw books that are jacked up. I mean that's where. Well, also, you know what? And I was talking to Mighty Mel about this. Um, it's a different market, guys. Uh, you know, and let's let's go back to let's go back to basics here. Um, in my opinion, CGC is kind of the old white man's uh, gaming grade. You know what it is? You know what I'm saying? But new money coming in for that book and that book, they're not locked into what sixty year old white comic book dealers from. 30 years ago decided to go into they want miles morales they don't care if it's one way or the other they want champions they want moon knight or moon girl or devil dinosaur i i mean i don't want to get too into that but i think there's a serious thing you have to put is the books i have record sales on are all very geared towards minority comic fans well well the problem too is um when I guess it's a generational thing too, right? So millennials, they'll, they like you talk about like some kind of TV series from the eighties. Millennials don't even know what you're talking about, and this will be happening, in, you know, in ten or fifteen years when CBCS has been along, you know, ten or fifteen years out. Same thing with CGC that the new kids remember. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, okay. So so Aaron, real quick. So you know, I'm sorry to cut you off there, Dino. No, you're good. So, Ninety-five, nine-eight, seventy-one. Nine sixes and twenty seven nine four. So that kind of means half the census is nine eight, pretty much, right? Just yeah. under, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because two ten total ninety five. Yeah, and then if you look yeah. at the CBCS, uh, let's see the so there is a total of eight graded, um, for the census. Uh, so there's six nine eights, one nine six, one nine. Eight. And so uh, that is, uh, so what, um, 66% of the census is nine eights on that one? 75, yeah. Yeah, I, I own four of those, at least. So that's me. And I, all of mine were dead mint from the second they came into the store. Because hmm. uh, we ordered 100 of those, and we got all four of them back nine eight. So I am literally, other than that, everybody else who's submitted at CBCS has gotten a lower grade. Interesting. And, you know, and I mean, that's just one example where I'm saying, and I'm, I'm, I'm throwing shade on, on CGC a lot of times. And bear with me. You're going to say, oh, he hates CGC because um, they screwed up three gorgeous copies of Next Men 21 and refused to cop two. Um, but... I, I really see that whole nine six to nine eight crossover story. CGC has been throwing out nine eights to the right dealers for so long that you know. And when you see these, how many nine eights have you pulled off the shelf for CGC and looked at it? And go, how did it get a nine eight with this spine tick on it at a show? 
Well, it's interesting too. It's not even it's not even nine eight. I've seen uh, I've seen people get for big big books. I mean, like big big books. I've been seeing uh, eight sixes. No, yeah. Well, I've seen like threes in the fives. You know, oh, okay. like, or I've seen like that should be a five and it's a seven somehow. Or I've yeah. seen it's a three and it's a six. And I've seen you know. Yeah, that that's even yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean. Well, and that goes back to those tales that we used to hear around the campfire back in the the good old days of, oh hey, this book just came through and it's the first one I've seen in a year and mm-hmm. it came from X dealer who's going to be at Baltimore next week uh, in next month. Let's go ahead and send him this 6.0 and then you make sure you're at his booth first thing in the morning because one of the guys who happened to work for CGC. Uh, off and on, showed up to a big convention with a list and a names of dealers on the list and was buying books. And then immediately within like three months, these things started showing up on eBay at a high grade. Hmm. And that's where those little tales came from. And you can find them out there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, I understand getting lucky. We've all got lucky, trust me, on grades. Oh, yeah. we, we all know that. I mean, there's a couple. I, I I think I've got a couple gift grades from CBCS, and I'm not gonna you know yeah. mention. Uh, but I and I've gotten a couple kicked in the nuts grades from CGC back in the day. Um, it's what it is, you know. I mean, and and Dino, you and Leg and Mel and Ben Stein and Brian, mm-hmm. I've watched openings from all you guys, and the amount of times I would have no liver. If I played a drinking game called, oh, this got a 9-6, I'm going to crack it and resend it to him. You're paying for the book twice to get the grade you think it should get. And most of it know what is a 9-8. I don't crack. You know what's funny? I don't crack. Like that last haul I did, I didn't crack yeah. one of them. I want to crack the Superior Spider-Man. That's the only one I cracked. Right. And I threw them right. up on eBay and said, fuck it. You, you know what I'm saying is yeah. so many people say, I'm just going to crack it and resubmit it. Yeah. If you're cracking books, if you get a 9.6 and you know it's a 9.8 and you're cracking it and resubmitted it, you're showing you have no faith in that company. You know it's a crapshoot whether you're getting a 9.6 or a 9.8. You know it's not based on a science. And that goes back to those three questions. Is CBCS accurately grading books? Is a 9.8 quality? And if we're not calling that out as a community, as an industry, and we just make a side joke, about I'll crack it and send it back for a nine eight, then we all know it and we're not discussing it. It's kind of like the Catholic Church with diddling, you know, priests. You know, we all know there's a problem, but nobody wants to mention it until Hollywood makes a movie about it. I I think cool. uh, I I submit to CGC because I kind of know as far as uh, I I crack slabs and I press, and I know exactly what they're looking at. You know, and I know I can look at a book now. Now, CBCS, that's kind of foreign to me. And so I I, I get kind of nervous. Like, uh, I I feel like I would get a better grade because I've got more history with them. And I know what what they're looking for versus, right? So Uh, I I send it. A lot of wives stay with their drunk husbands that beat them because it's really comfortable to not have to go through divorce court. Well, oh, okay, Joe. I'll say this. So, yeah. my, was my, my, yeah. well, I love it. That was great. <laughs> well, so so my last submission was to CBCS, and it was like I want to say it was like twenty five books, you know. And I took a huge gamble. I was like, no press, you know. Fuck it. Why not? Do you know how many nine eights I hit? Fourteen. Out of uh, how many? I hit out of twenty five. The rest were nine six, and then like one nine four. No man, press. You should have got. You should have got them press, man. You should have got them press. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you know, you I mean, hit twenty five I mean, out of twenty five, baby. <laughs> you know, I, I I know I get that, but I mean, you know, you see what I'm saying though, like. Oh, I got you. I mean, yeah, uh, I yeah. I mean, so like this, I that should like kind of ease your fears a little bit, you know, like you know. No, I, no. As far as uh, I, how can I explain this? Okay, so right. when I when I crack a book open, and I look at flaws. I, I address those flaws because I know that's what they're dinging them for. I, I don't know the strategy grading from CBCS because obviously there's there's a huge difference, right? So 
I that's why I say I think CBCS grades. Uh, you use the word more consistent. I would say it's stricter. I think they. Um, what I mean, well, it depends. I mean, yeah. is the substitute school teacher who lets you watch a movie more consistent? No, I'm not. I'm not okay. arguing that point. I'm saying that I think they have their shit together. Honestly, yeah. I I just uh, me, for the life of me, I I wish they would change their slab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So can I say that it's like you know we've always heard this term like grading is subjective. Like I've never understood that. Like, you know, we have a grading scale. There's certain like flaws that we're looking for and what dings are, you know, our books down. So why is that subjective? Like, yeah, I mean, because I, I think it's, it's where the ding comes from, right? You know, for me in this hobby, right? The nine, six to nine, eight difference is so freaking fine, right? So freaking fine, right? And the fact that nine, eights can command such a premium blows my mind. I'm happy to buy nine sixes for my PC, but I think it comes down to, okay, is that a tick? Is that color break? And it comes down to like, are we going to ding them there or not? Right. right. Um, so I, I think that's where the subjectivity comes now. Um, but you know, if anything else, it's, it's, there's going to be a little bit of a wiggle room, but a lot of these grades though, what I think, you know, what Dennis is talking about is, you know, when you look at these slabs, that's a clear, color breaking tick there's no way that book should have been a nine eight right and i or, never see that on cbcs books right right i mean yeah i, I mean where, where, where it's like you know it's you know you can tell that it's like way bigger than like what the eighth of an inch that's allowed or whatever yeah. I, and so you know but i think that's what we need to do as a community too is like you know when we see things like that like you know, it can't be subjective. At that I, point, I right? wish, I wish there was some transparency with both graders, right? Yeah. I wish they would take a box randomly, right? Open it up. This is how we grade your books. Okay. And we're going to film this. Look, look at this spine tick right here, motherfucker. That's why you're getting a nine, six right. right off the bat. And I'm not, right. let's say I don't look at anything. It would be a nine, six. And then look, because you know what I find when I when I crack open slabs and and guys are telling me, oh man, they screwed me. I I start looking inside the book and there's a page that's bent, and I go, that's where they got you, bro. You know, I mean, you're just looking on the the front and the back, like. But sometimes if you look inside the book, you see a page accidentally bent that somebody else pressed, and I, and I'm like, so like it's not always you know, like what you, yeah. oh, that should be a night eight all day. We'll open well, up the book, you know? I'll tell you two quick stories real quick. So I had one book, real banger. Um, I think it was a one in 3,000 or one in 1,000. And I got a nine, six on it from CBCS. I got a nine, I, I cracked it, gave it to one of uh, my guys who presses, sent it back in, it got a nine, six. I gave it to uh, Half Price Crook. And he was like, man, I worked on that book all night uh, and I got a 9.8 back from it. <laughs> I mean, but the point was, is I got a 9.6 both times from CBCS. It wasn't what they wanted. That third time after Jessup worked his magic on that thing for an entire night, all of a sudden it's finally where they wanted a 9.8. Right, because I guarantee Jessup found that I, I, yeah. I can almost guarantee it was probably inside but, the book. You know, I, I've been, I've been pre-screening 9.8 with CBCS now on all my books, all my, and I do, I do a video. So if you, uh, cheap shill, I do a video on YouTube called what's degrading, uh, where I open up my CBCS and, 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 uh, card graded packages and let you guys see what I get right when I get them. Um, I submitted two of these, uh, the newsstand right there. Um, one of them came back nine, eight, the other got kicked out. They were identical. But the second I see, I'm not as good as you, Red Hood. But the second I got that back, book back, not graded, and I looked at it through the eyes of I know this one is different from the other one. I could see the one little flaw that they saw that kicked that nine six or nine six or lower back out and gave that one a nine eight. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I got one little. I got one little uh, CGC story that I I can't even explained to this day i sent in a copy of ultimate fallout 4 comes back in 8.5 i'm like what the fuck how is this book in 8.5 you gotta be fucking kidding me 
And um, I literally crack it. I don't even press it. I send it right back. And like, they fucked this up. Comes back, 9-6. How can you go from an 8-5 to 9-6? Right? I mean, there, 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 there can't be that much. I I think I think they the the new batch of and I saw an interview with Steve Borak. He's like, how do you hire? I forget what the number is. A thousand new people. There's no not a thousand people who know how to do this. No and sure. you don't hire them. But I think if you just grab Dottie from Secretarial and Skippy from Shipping and give them a one hour lecture on how to do comic books, and they start looking at the fuzz around the staple as a point two off and the 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 fuzz around the the foxing on the corner that anybody would have passed because it's a printer cut, you know, and you give those guys the power, the sword to make your book less valuable, then yeah, I think they can figure out a way to make it an eight five. And then when you go back through, it's not going to Skippy, it's going to one of the more legitimate graders, and they're like take looking at it with a little bit better eyes. Yeah, it's the only explanation. I, I will say this, though, right? The growing pains that CGC is going to have to figure out with this investment from Blackstone, you're going to start seeing a lot of this because you're right. Grading is not something everybody can do. Right. Right. Well, you can't just... we, were talking, we were talking before the thing. What are they paying? $15,000 a year for graders or something? Whatever whatever it is. I mean, that's you can't live on that, obviously. Right. But I mean, the point is, is... Um, Anybody worth his weight in gold or is worth his weight in anything who can grade a comic book can make more than $15,000 over the, a month buying books on eBay and slabbing them to yeah, make. It's a song, yeah. 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 So yeah. how are you going to get high quality people? You know, you whatever it went for, what, $500 million is what the rumor is or something? No, I, can't uh, I think that's. That. Yeah, no, it's actually published that, it's, that it was purchased for $500 million. Like yeah, several news articles have like. Dollars. I'm sorry, you better five hundred million dollars. What the? F yeah, Blackstone there, 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 purchased CGC for five hundred million dollars to be the yeah. parent company or whatever. Yeah, so you better be you better be finding those guys to pay a hundred thousand dollars worth a, a year or two to uh, to get them away from their cushy job of you know slinging books at conventions because you're never going to be able to get where you want to get to paying fifteen thousand dollars to people living in Florida. You know, to grade books just randomly off the street. Hey, you were flipping burgers last week. You want to learn to sell comic books or grade comic books? Yeah, come on over. Yeah. Oh, you were wearing the Mickey Mouse costume at Disney last year? Okay, come on over. Hey, you don't want to wear that hot costume anywhere. You know, come work indoors with us. We're like in our brand new facility. So, like, right. hey, boys, listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I've, I've, I've got a bail, guys. Um, I'd love to keep talking. Yeah. Really good stuff. I'll catch the rest of it later, but uh, but, but good stuff. We'll, we'll catch you guys on the flip side. All right, brother. You take care, man. All right. Yeah, later, yeah. Guys. Uh, yeah we'll probably end not too long. So, yeah, no, we'll continue to say a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just going to say one thing. Like, has so you, you, uh, you talked to Steve Borak off and yeah. on, or yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I think so, you, what are his thoughts of custom labels, man? You know, you know, his. Thought has been, I've seen him do the interviews. I don't ask him because I've seen him do the interviews and I agree with him 100%. Uh, they're not selling a label. They're selling the, the well, professional I, I, I get it. I get it. But like then don't put a label then if you're not selling the label. Just get a magic marker and put 9-8 on it. You, wow. are sell, you are selling a label. And that's no, what we're selling. paying. That's they're what we're selling. paying you for. Right? They're if selling. I had Steve here, I would say put put freaking Deadpool on it for us because no, that's what we want doesn't, no we don't, I don't think this industry does want that I think a few no, I, I said they're like there's kids like me and you right. don't want I mean me and you don't like care but yeah. that would be that would be some differentiation yeah, right there's PSA can you put me up so they can see how yeah, yeah this is PSA this is the CGC of card grading Okay. Yeah, that's it's boring. Yeah. This is the most boring ass label in the history of labels. And I guarantee you they got bought for a lot more than five hundred million dollars. Yeah. Okay. And it's bare look, you get a little hologram, you get a little barcode, you get a little yeah. bit of a serial number, you get the most boring grade ever. You can't even get a nine five out of PSA. 
They only do nines and tens and eights and eight fives. On the back, you get their marketing. You get PSA twice and the QR code. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. You, you needed to brand yourself two more times on the back. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what, you know, guess what? There's, there's 10,000 of this card. Okay, this is the equivalent of uh, Spider-Man number one McFarlane, right? There are more of these cards than probably graded McFarlane Spider-Man ones. Yeah, that's not even counting the 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 refractor oh, or, yeah, the, yeah. or the reprint of the yeah, refractor, well, right? Where's Beckett? Not the most uh, expensive brand, but one of the most trusted. Yeah, it's a beautiful label too. Right, and that's and you can't see that's that's see through. Right. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's kind of yeah, cool. So it's like suspended. Their logo is suspended, and it's the same forwards and backwards, so they don't have to rebrand themselves over here. Right. How would you feel with a comic in something like that? I would love well, it. Right. Well, but you know what? I don't get to choose that. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, I've seen comics graded by Beck, not graded, yeah. but signature verified in a Beckett case. Yeah. Like that does exist. That's a Beckett autograph service. Uh, B well, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there is like a similar kind of service, like where you're getting signature verification. How did, how did or, it look, Aaron? I mean, I didn't see one in person, but I definitely seen pictures and stuff like that. Okay, and they okay. had this displays they, at like different cons. They look great. Yeah, but I mean, from what I saw, like I was pretty impressed. I mean, See, you know, there's, it, there's a weird lack of integration between Beckett and CBCS, but the same thing happens between CGC and whatever their Pokemon grading company is. Oh, okay. There's a there's a lack of there's a lack of synergy between those two divisions, which I think is because the card people are batshit crazier than us comic book people. They really are. Yeah, I mean, okay, so you know a little quick story so when i went to go um drop off my books for grading because i'm in texas and okay. I, I i happened to be in dallas for a vacation to like you know dig through shops like great digging there but that's not the point the point mm -hmm. was that i got to schedule a time to drop off my books at cbcs and you know that's what i felt more comfortable that way like you know yeah. i didn't have to worry about the mail like messing up my books i, I could go to the to to the beckett headquarters because that's where CBCS is housed now. Right. And it was funny because it was in the middle of COVID. I couldn't even, at first there wasn't even anyone at the front door. So it said like all deliveries go to the side door where the loading dock is. So I go knock on the loading dock door and then. There's just two guys back there with a baseball bat to steal your books. Uh, that's, that's No, no. So th there, was, um, there was someone from the card side of Beckett that was like, you know, there to receive packages or whatever. And then they're like, oh, let me call someone that, that you spoke to for, for comics. I was like, okay. So they expected him to send me back to the front of the office. And then I ended up just sitting in the warehouse for like five, 10 minutes. And then someone came back and grabbed me. And then they're like, okay. And then they're like, oh, just follow me. And then, you know, I got kind of like an impromptu like tour of their facilities. And the, the cool part about that was this is uh, right about the time where they were transferring their pressing services, in-house pressing services from Florida to their new headquarters in Dallas. Okay. So they're, they're setting up all their, all their pressers and, you know, this lounge area or, you know, office area. And so I, I saw like where they were all setting that up. I was like, wow, this is like really impressive. This is going to change your turnaround. This is like when they were promoting the, how, how long was it for? I think it was like, was it two weeks or three weeks? Like on for their, yeah, on pressing, in house pressing. For oh, CBCS. yeah. Uh, I think it was two to four weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. I think that's what they were promoting. And so, like, you know, that was kind of cool. Be like, oh, this is where it's going to be. It's I'm having to receive books in Dallas, go back to Florida, come back to Dallas for grading. Like, you know, right. it's all in house now. They just recently streamlined their, uh, autograph authentication as well because now i think it took this book i think had a, an 11 day turnaround time with an additional one to one week turnaround because they they do the verification signature there 
So when it gets there, it has to go to the verification before because it gets a status of grade despite verification. So if it had come back unverified, it would have been whatever their uh, their notation notation is for. I think it's like uh. red, but it's like greenish now or something. I forget what they have. But if it didn't come back verified, it would have come back. Hey, it's got writing on the cover that looks like an S T A N and L E E. You know, it would have come back not Stan Lee. But right. it goes over to this other floor now to get verified. And then it comes back down to the grading area. And then it gets into the pipeline just like any other book uh, and fast track. Like I said, I think I had this book back in like 11 days plus verification. And this book right here was 13 days from the day I sent it off to the day it came back from FedEx. Wow. 13 days. For, and, and on top of that, they had a 10% discount on this. So I paid $32 to get this book back in 13 days. What is that? What are those amazing fantasy uh, uh, reprints go for? It's a gorgeous book, man. Oh, it's, oh. You know what? I'll tell you what. Find find a 9-8. This book is so freaking notoriously bad. Yeah. It picks up every tick in the world. And if you can find one that's as perfect as this, uh, I, I don't think there – I mean, what's – do you do you have it? I'm looking it up right now on GPA, I mean, which is obviously um, just going to tell me the – what is it cgc grades but i mean you know it's something i think i i mean i usually have a threshold of like over 100 200 dollars before i'll send it off so i want to say that this has at least a hundred dollar and nine eight yeah so okay here this is why i sent it off um cgc 9.6 uh actually can i just send this to you oh uh here, don't worry about it. I don't know how to do this shit. You, it, here, you'd have to. Here, here I got it. I, I'm, I'm pulling up my screen right now. Okay. Uh, so a 9.6 CGC sold in April for $139.99. And right. that wasn't a newsstand. All right. So, yeah, in March of 2021, there was one that sold for $150, right? Right. And then yeah, twelve months, twelve month, ah, twelve month average is one seventy three, and then yeah, and that's not newsstand, that's undifferentiated, right? Right, because this the like GPA takes uh, CGC analysis, like right, 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 it, right, right, and then and I think it's mainly eBay, Comic Link, and something else. Yeah, um, if yeah, you had so. to sell it, what would you sell it for? About four hundred bucks. Uh, I would. I'm going to put five hundred on it. Take four hundred. Yeah. Uh, in this market, I just think it's insane to to give this stuff up for cheap, especially knowing how hard it is to get it. Oh yeah, see, yeah, I mean, you know your stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah nine point four sold for one hundred and ten in April. Yeah. So even then, the differential is only forty bucks between nine four and nine six. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, was this one? Does it say the date, the publication date? Because there's. It's yeah, giving me two variations on it. So this one is the uh, March third of nineteen ninety two edition. Okay, yeah. So the GPA showed was the nineteen ninety. Yeah, there is a JC Penny variant uh, that I saw on. I think it was a uh, Ultra Spec Matrix at one time. Um, but there is a there is a JC Penny and there is a newsstand. So I might go insane and just newsstand one one thousand dollars. Because I mean, <laughs> who's got it? I don't. I don't think right. anybody else got a, a, yeah. a ninety-eight newsstand. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a pretty good book, man. Yeah, good but the point is, is it doesn't matter how many people got it, and that's what I put on. I put on uh, Instagram today. Does it matter that this says CBCS up in the corner and not CGC? Because guess what? We just looked. There's there's two hundred copies of this in existence. And half of the half the copies in existence are nine eights, and only yeah. four CBCS nine eights, which to me is a Beckett ten in my book. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. at that point, what is this worth in a CBCS? It's not worth less. It held the record for a while. 
and now CGC has a $100 bump over my record for this book. And when I sell this for 200 more than that last record, that'll be the new record. Yeah, I, I want to say that um, on the week I missed out on dealer flip side, um, it was it Steve from My Bargain Comics. He had a comparison of like a CBCS and CGC. And I want to say it was uh, Avengers 196. Mm. And so like he, he threw out the exact numbers. And I want to say there was like, what? One CBCS nine eight uh, for Avengers one ninety six, and then I mean, CGC didn't have many more, like maybe like four or something like that. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm just guessing numbers off the top of my head. But we we all agree that that just whatever the word is, accurate, harsher, stricter. You know, what less forgiving. Um, getting a nine eight, like I'll tell you what. I've never gotten a 9.8 Amazing Spider-Man 300 ever from CBCS ever. I mean that that book is notoriously hard to get a 9.8 anyway. And I think it's notoriously harder from CBCS. Yeah. So if you if you somehow think a CBCS 9.8 is worth less than a CGC 9.8 on that book, you're out of your mind. I, I want to thank everyone for joining us to for this panel discussion. Uh, you know, I'm sure like we'll be talking about this way more. I'm, you know, this might just be part one, and we you know yeah, we're yeah. more pe more more people into this discussion because I mean it's been a while since we've had a roundtable discussion about. I mean, but you know things are changing in the market. Um, you know, cons are about to start opening again, so we'll definitely have more conversations on you know different things aspects of you know, the comic industry, you know, something that affects us. Every day. We talked about with Blackstone and I, I don't want to side trail you right as you're leading out, but does, does a corporation throwing its hat into the ring, is that going to bring more authenticity or less? And I think we all know they're going to be about turning asses and seats. And I don't think that's going to bring quality up at CGC. I just, yeah, because at the end of the day, they're going to be labor operators and and whoever they hired, they're going to start stripping it down, yeah, and yeah. saying, "Hey, we got to cut overhead. We got to cut overhead." So they're going to be laying off people eventually, a year what? from now, two years from now, and they'll get right back to the staff they currently have now. Yeah. Well, and that's the this, reality. This has a final word. Yeah, you know, just look at the history of what Blackstone has done, and then that can tell you what kind of company they are. So. Have a great yeah. day and thank you for joining us. But yeah, we're gonna have to end. I there. like you, Dennis. You're awesome, dude. I think the same You're thing. You're awesome, man. And I'm gonna follow you on Instagram, man. And uh, hold up a stack of books like I can. <laughs>